Hey there everybody and welcome back, I'm the Fnatic and, well, you read the title of this video so I'll assume you know what's going on here. We're talking about one of, if not my favorite player in the NBA, Luka Doncic, and why this year is easily going to be his MVP season if he's going to have one. Now, over the last three years, Luka has consistently put up 27 to 28 points per game with over 8 assists and over 8 boards. What changes this year? Well, well, <laughs> not much to be honest, except in the first two contests of this year, Luka has put up 33 points, 8 assists, and 8 rebounds. Why is this kind of important? Well, in these games, his team won against the Grizzlies 137-96, to which, if you didn't think that was impressive on Ja Morant, you might need to reevaluate some things. But they also only lost to Phoenix by two. Why is that kind of important? Well, two years ago, Phoenix was in the finals. Granted, Phoenix is not, you know the best team in the league. But they are certainly up there. You look, they made the conference finals last year. This team has routinely been one of, if not, or one of the best teams in the league. So, losing by two, it's reasonable. Except the thing is that we know for pretty much a fact that the Grizzlies are going to be a fourth, fifth, at low, maybe a sixth or seventh seed. They're going to be in that 4-7 to seven range in the West. Why is that important? Well, that helps us understand that the Grizzlies are kind of good. So when you're blowing out one of the better teams in your conference by 40 points in a regulation game, it's kind of impressive. Now, 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 now. The reasons for thinking Luka might not win MVP are definitely valid. He definitely has his concerns on the defensive end, his lack of physicality, but did I mention that he's also averaging a steal and a half and a block? It's not like his defensive numbers are utterly atrocious. He's clearly putting in some effort. In terms of defensive win shares, you know, he's got .2 already. I, su I suppose that doesn't mean anything to you, so I'm going to move on from it. But the point is that Luka is sort of at the point in his career where he is stagnating. Um, he, his eight boards, eight assists, he's been around that number or slightly above in the case of that one year. He had 9.4, um, but he's been around that number for the last three years. His points per game were consistently at the 27 to 28 mark and this year he's had a really good start so it's up to after scoring 35 in the first game and then having a little bit of a down he's averaging 33. Now 33 is definitely an MVP type kind of points per game. The problem is we don't know if the Mavs can win. The only thing that holds Luka back this season from winning an MVP is whether or not the Mavs win. That is the entire determiner. Because, statistically, there is no argument to be had that the Dallas Mavericks, or that Luka Doncic is not, not only a top three player in the league, but he quite possibly could be the best statistical player in the league next to Jokic. Now, I don't know who else you really want to throw in the argument. Giannis, maybe? But in terms of statistics, those two guys are legendary. They're doing things that the world has never seen, and by the world, I mean basketball throughout any of its history. I don't know what you really want to look at for that, but if you can pull up damn near anybody, because Jokic was the most efficient player in NBA history last season, but breaking records for PER and win shares and just about every statistic imaginable um, in terms of efficiency, and now Luka Doncic is just sheer volume. Which is, you know, kind of cool. Um, he's similar to Russell Westbrook in the fashion of 
he puts up these big gaudy numbers and his three-point shooting isn't exactly the best in the league, except there's a difference between him and Westbrook, which is when it comes down to it, Luka hits crazy game-winning clutch shots. Why is this important to note? Because he also misses them. The reason why Luka's percentages can suffer sometimes um, from three-point range is because not only is he ne necessarily the world's best three-point shooter, but he also takes some pretty crazy shots. You look at his 40-foot threes, his spinning threes, his game-winning threes. Like, you have to realize there are a lot of those that didn't go in in order for the two or three that he does make to go in. But the ones he does make are, <laughs> they're pretty damn crazy. And not only are they crazy, they're also important because they win games. And when you win games, you your team wins games, and you get closer to that MVP. Because, well, we sort of like that here. Now, what else can we really say about Luka? What can I say about Luka that you don't already know is the thing? Because we know what Luka is. We know what Luka does. We know that Luka Doncic could potentially be the greatest player basketball will ever see. Except, there's this guy named Victor Wembyama that I kind of just made a video about. You should go watch that. Um, that people are saying that are go it's going to be better than literally anyone else in NBA history. Which is kind of overhyped. But, you know, that's, uh, that's a separate video and I'm getting off topic with my rant now. But most importantly, Luka Doncic. I love you. But, your team does not win games. And you have Christian Wood on your roster. And Christian Wood kind of did some terrible shit on the Pistons. Not because he was bad, but because he decided to leave us because he wanted to win, and his solution to wanting to win was to go to Houston. So, needless to say, Christian Wood's judgment on what counts, uh, what qualifies as winning basketball is not good. Christian Wood is not a guy that has ever contributed to winning basketball. Um, and that's kind of, kind of a concern, because when you think about it, Christian Wood is kind of the second best player on this Mavs team. I don't think anyone's arguing that. You know, you look back a few years, LeBron, or to just a year or two ago, LeBron was telling his teammates to look out for Christian Wood because he was him. But the thing is, Christian Wood doesn't know what he's doing. If we get to the playoffs, is Christian Wood going to know what to do when it comes to clutch time? Is he going to be in Game 7 Finals pulling up to be an amazing shot blocker and shit? Like, no. No. I, I expect Rudy Gobert-level performance from him in the playoffs is the thing. But then again, the MVP is not a playoff award. It's a regular season award. And when you think about it, the narrative is kind of really focused in on Luka. We have a lot of people talking about Luka right now. And it's kind of because we feel like he's been denied the MVP these last few years. But at the same time, he just doesn't win. But he needs to win. And you get stuck in this loop where it's like, you can't not give it to Luka because he's so amazing, individually. But he's not lifting up the guys around him to be good enough to where he can justify it over a guy like... I, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Over a guy like LeBron. Like LeBron in 2020. Um, anyway. That's it. I'm, I'm out of things to rant about. Luka Doncic is amazing, but he doesn't win. <laughs> he doesn't win. That's the basic, that's the basis of this video at this point. Um, shout out to the Mavs. Uh, I don't know what. 45 wins. Book it. Yeah, I stole that from Motown, Noah. Detroit stand up. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I don't know. Let me know your favorite Luka Doncic game winner. And I'm out.